Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and fellow Tigers, today we are here to, gra to gather an honor and welcome a legendary figure whose name is etched into the heart of Missouri basketball, Norman Eugene Norm Stewart. His journey from the fields of Shelby County to the courts of Mizzou represent not just a chronicle of athletic prowess, but a testament to unwavering dedication, resilience, and community spirit. Norm Stewart's story began as a standout athlete at the University of Missouri, where he left a mark as a player from the Tigers from 1952 to 1956. And after his playing days for Mizzou, Norm briefly pursued professional sports, both in baseball and basketball. But it was on the sidelines where he found his true calling. Returning to Mizzou as a graduate student and as an assistant coach, he began shaping the lives of young athletes, a mission that would define his life and his storied career. In 1961, Norm embarked on his own coaching journey at the University of Northern Iowa, where he achieved remarkable success, capturing conference championships and molding winning teams. Yet destiny would soon call him back to Columbia, where for 32 extraordinary seasons, Norm Stewart was the heart and the soul of Mizzou basketball. Under his guidance, the Tigers soared to unprecedented heights, clinching Big Eight championships, conference championships, and making 16 NCAA tournament appearances. Norm's coaching brilliance was recognized by accolades like Coach of the Year, both from the UPI and the AP. But Norm's impact stretched beyond the court his battle with colon cancer in 1989 showcased a new facet in his character, resilience. Fueled by his own fight, Norm turned adversity into action with Coaches vs. Cancer, a crusade that continues to this day to raise millions of money in the war against this relentless disease. Today, as we induct Norm Stewart into our prestigious icons, we celebrate more than championships and victories. We honor a man whose legacy of passion, excellence, passion that inspires us all. Norm Stewart, forever a tiger, forever a legend. Please join me in welcoming Norm Stewart to the Hall of Famous Missourians. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, Governor Parsons, team guests, ladies and gentlemen, my family. Old joke, I'm not going to use it. I want to I want to really enjoy this, but I'm telling you it's tough. Uh, I'm a sentimental guy anyway. Tough, and I look out here and I see all the people that have caused this great thing that is happening today. I was going to ask mentioned something about all the reps from Boone County and Shelby County and tell them that I assume that they voted for me in this deal. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, if you did, thank you. And if you didn't, I think back to a team that I had in 1994, which was a long time ago, 30 years, they gave me a Christmas card. And on the card it said, by a squad vote of seven to five, we wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> now, 
I have to tell you also, don't laugh because we'll be here too long. <laughs> I want I, my family's been introduced, but I am so proud of them. I wish they'd stand. Family, stand. <laughs> I could go, this young man over here, retired Delta pilot, international. Uh, it's hard to believe he's retired, he's only 24. <laughs> but our daughter, Jeff lives in Columbia, Missouri. Our daughter lives in LA. Our other son is a mogul with Morgan Stanley. He lives in Kansas City. Thank you guys for being here. I got three great grandchildren. Did they allow them in? <laughs> three guys stand up. Kelly, Logan. <laughs> Keller, <laughs> Keller, I'm sorry. And the little beautiful one is Millie. Millie, you're a doll. You know, I am, I really am so proud to be a Missourian and to join such an illustrious class of people. I have been, I had a tour, Bob Pretty gave us a tour last summer, I think it was, and uh, I got to see a lot of the people that have gone before me. And uh, uh, this makes you feel so good, makes me feel so good. My family, I hope, to join such an illustrious group. Um, uh, I have some common things uh, with some of the people that have gone before me. Uh, one thing is that Samuel Clemens, born as uh, known as Mark Twain, and I have something in common. Everybody thinks of him as being Hannibal, Missouri. Clemens was born in Florida, Missouri. Now, what I, that's all I have in common with him is this. Everybody relates me to Shelbyville, Missouri, which is fine, I'm proud of that, but I was born in Leonard, Missouri. And what happened is that it was a small town so after, when I was age five, we moved to the metropolitan area of Shelbyville. <laughs> Can't imagine my mom and dad thinking from those circumstances of being here today. I know they're watching, but I, I think a lot about them and what they provided for our family. I had two brothers, they're both deceased, and a sister who's still living, and a wonderful family, and some of the, some of the great lessons, some of the great lessons are learned in, in small towns. I had to write something down, I didn't want to get up and wing it. I can talk about the ball players, I can talk about the ball clubs, talk about my family. I want to tell you the person, and I mean that, mean this from the bottom of my heart in all sincerity. The person, like the preacher who went on and on about how good a person that was that had just passed away, and his neighbor got up and said, Reverend, you're talking about the wrong person. We've been talking about the wrong person here. The person that should be here is this little girl here, Virginia. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm 
I'm talking about her. Her family has a wonderful background. Her father was a pioneer pilot, a license signed by Orville Wright, 1914. He signed 66 license, and we have a copy of the one that he signed when her father got his pilot's license. Uh, she has had this adventuresome bone in her body, and so I, due to that, I've had the good fortune to travel with her and be on six continents, I would say maybe 150 communities. And think about that coming from a small town where we had one bedroom, first five years, one bedroom and four children. We had a nail to hang her clothes on, or clothes, uh, and to come from that and feel good. You know, everybody, everybody at that time didn't have that many things, and it, we were poor, but we always had a nice house, we always had love in the house, and we always had good food. So when I think back about that, and then we moved, as I said, to Shelbyville, I say this humorously, but I really think maybe some of it's true. The reason I liked basketball was I got to take a shower. Now, some of you probably don't connect with that, but we did not have running water until I was a uh, sophomore in high school. And, uh, up until that time, you heated your water, put it in a pan, and you took your bath, usually on Saturday. If you had a bad week, you got one on Wednesday also. But that is so good. As I said, you get so many lessons from a small town. I went back uh, after the year. We'd had a particularly good year, and I always go back and I go over to the pool hall, because that's where you can really get a lot of instruction. And uh, we'd just come off of a, a real good year, and, and I walked in, and nobody said a word. One or two guys said, hi, Norm. I said, hello. I'm in there about 10 minutes, and finally one of them said, hey, Norm, you still coaching? <laughs> that's why you're humble. You, you learn that in a hurry. I love that town. I love this state. I love going to uh, the other parts of the country. I love going to L.A. I have a daughter there, but I love going to L.A. I love going to New York. And always, always, the conversation always led to where are you from? I'd say Missouri. Sometimes I'd say Missouri, like I do on the east side. But I'd say <laughs> Missouri, and they, you know, you get the rolled eye. Those of you have done this, and a lot of you have. You get the rolled eye. Oh, geez, you know. But, uh, so I'd always engage them in something. I said, uh, "Who's the top businessman that you've ever heard of in the world?" And, uh, they might name somebody, and I'd say. How about Sam Walton? How about Walt Disney? And I, I did not know Walt. I knew he was from Marceline. I've seen his home. And, uh, but I did get to know Sam occasionally. Then they, I'd say, name a movie star. Who's somebody that's really a, really a top movie star? They name say, How about Brad Pitt? You ever hear of him? He's from Springfield, Missouri. How about entertainment? How about Cheryl Crow? She's pretty good, you know. That's the other thing. In Missouri, pretty good, excuse the language, but pretty good is a hell of a compliment. Whereas if you go to New York or LA or something, 
the guy's great, oh, he's fantastic, he's wonderful, he's out of sight. You know you're, you know you're on top in Missouri when they say, hey, you're pretty good. We've had a, I'm gonna give you four things. Back to the player, I'm so, I'm always so, they're part of family. I think my family, a lot of times, my immediate family, thought that I was paying more attention to the ball clubs than I was to them. Never been a ball player that I've had, or that we've had, that hadn't been in my house. So they're part of our family. So I tried to be as much as I could to our immediate family, but I also included the other people. It's uh, been a wonderful ride, again, because of this little girl here. I'm glad there's a law in Missouri that uh, you can marry a 10-year-old girl. <laughs> it's been a wonderful adventure. Stop and think of the second, the, the psychology today, if you're accepted, that is so good. That puts you on the start. That's where, quite honestly, in our country and in the world today, that word should be used a little more, acceptance. I've been accepted. The state, other states, other communities. When you're accepted, then you've got to have a little achievement. Try to be successful. I don't know how you define success. The only thing I know is we left it a little better than we found it. And then if you do, if you do those things, one important ingredient, and we all love this, we love for recognition. We love to be recognized. Now there's, every time I say something, there's a story. So we could be here a long time. I know a lot of you probably need to go to the bathroom, but. <laughs> so, again, such a thrill. Have, to have people come to this and say, nice going, pretty good. Well, I want to tell you something. You go out, you're ever driving out in the country, look and you see on a fence post, you see a turtle on top of that fence post, you can bet your sweet bippy he didn't get there by himself. Neither <laughs> did I. Thank you. Thank all of you. Roger. Coach. Yeah. Do uh, we have other comments? Are we good? Are we have, you wanna you wanna open up your uh yeah. you do your best? Yeah. Before we unveil uh, Norm's bust, it's with great honor on behalf of the House of Representatives to present you, Coach, with a resolution that outlines all of your achievements that we've outlined today. And it's incredible to have you here before us in this, in this great hall, you know, representing Missouri as you did so strongly as a coach. And you're going down in the, in the annals of history for the state of Missouri. Incredible honor. Thank, Thank you, you, Coach. Speaker. Thank you. Do you want to come up? Do you want to come up?
have any other speakers. I'm not in charge here, by the way. It only appears that way. Um, please join me in a reception honoring Coach Norm Stewart in the House Gallery. Thank you. <laughs>